Do failed gel prints halt your creative process? Learn how to keep the creative process going and how to fix and repurpose those failed prints. Hey guys, it's Amber Rain Davis from NotableInk.com. Welcome back to the channel. Simon Says Stamp just dropped their Make Magic release and I have the Shoot for the Stars die here. To go along with the sentiments theme, we'll need some stars for our gel printing. So I pulled out some of my star dies and I took a piece of vellum and just created this mask. So I have a couple different sizes here, also a small cluster of stars, and then I also have the positive pieces. So you can see those here. And we're gonna use the positive and the negative of these in our gel printing process. I picked some really bright colors because I was thinking about how could I gel print a galaxy I'm just gonna let you know now, this is a total fail for a galaxy and I'll show you why and what would have been more successful. So right now I'm putting down some Payne's Gray and I end up lifting off a lot of the Payne's Gray because it was just making me a little uncomfortable to have that much black. So I have different types of bubble wrap here and just packaging and I'm gonna use that to lift off some of this Payne's Gray. Really, I should have done maybe 2% of the lifting that I've done here. But again, I was just really uncomfortable with all of that black. The bubble wrap that I'm using has a lot of dried paint on it, and you can see that that's sticking to the press, which is going to add even more texture, so I don't mind that at all. I'm adding a super bright green. This is yellowish green from Amsterdam. I'll have all of the supplies linked in the description down below. The exact color of the paints that I'm using is not really important, but some of you want to know exactly what color I'm using. So those are down there for your reference. If I forget anything, just leave me a comment. I'll make sure to add it to the list and I'll message you back with the product that I use. Sometimes I forget a product here and there. This is cobalt blue, and I'm also going to add carmine, which is a bluish red. It's a cool red, super bright. And you can see that instead of cleaning my brayer on a piece of deli paper, which is what I normally do, I'm actually cleaning it on my five by seven gel press that's off to the side. And that's just gonna help me pull another print over there on that side. Now, I end up loving the print that we pull from the five by seven not so much this print here. So here I go adding even more texture to this as if there's not enough, you guys. So I have this eight by 10 gel press adhered to, this is a rubbing plate, so I'm just lifting more texture. Um, this eight by 10 gel press is adhered to a Joggles stamp mount. It's a, what is it? It's gonna be nine by 10 stamp mount. And I should have taken advantage of it being mounted. If I had lifted this up, and looked at the other side, I would have easily seen that I just lifted way too much black paint. I added a layer of white paint over the dried layers we already had, and I'm adding a piece of Hammer Mill Color Laser Copy Paper. This is the 60 pound weight. Again, it'll be linked down below. So while that's sitting and adhering to the gel press so that I'm able to pull up all of the bits from that print, I'm just gonna add some of these star die cuts to our other piece over here. Now that paint is dry, and so I find that you're able to get a really crisp um, lift technique when your paint is dry. You get a really nice pattern, and you're able to pull that paint up really easily. So we'll go ahead and pull our print over here on our eight by 10, and it's like crazy, you guys. <laughs> There's so much going on over here. So I look at this and I'm just like, yeah, that's not what I was going for. So you can see if I had left so much more of that black, it would have been closer to a galaxy. Also, I could have gone in at this point and added a layer of black, just lifted a few areas and put that on top of this. And it probably would have gotten me closer to that galaxy look that I was going for, but I just set it aside for now. For the five by seven, I'm gonna add Prussian blue to this. And this is going to fill in those areas that we lifted, but it's going to leave the stars open and clear and without any blue pigment. So those stars are act acting as masks rather than a stencil. Before you take your print, you need to make sure that you remove your masks and just set them to the side. They're all curled up, otherwise I would have stuck them to the other gel plate over there, but I didn't wanna fuss with them being all curled up. 
I have my tweezers and I'm going to gently remove the stars from the gel plate without puncturing the gel plate. You want to make sure that the tips of your tweezers don't dig into your gel plate and cause a puncture because you're going to get paint stuck in there. It's going to cause some issues. Now I'm going to fan the paint to dry it. If I were to take the print right now while this blue paint was still wet, do you see the color that's inside the stars? The color inside the stars is completely dry, so that would not pull up with the print. I would just have the blue and none of the color inside of the stars. If I dry this blue paint, then I'm able to put on another color. In this case, I'm going to use white to keep things a little bit bright. And this will fill in the stars. It'll add a layer of wet paint over all of the blue. So I'll be able to pull the blue and all of that color that's inside the stars. It's gonna make for a more dynamic look than just pulling it at the blue stage. I have both of these gel plates adhered to stamp mounts from Joggles. And the nice thing about that is you're able to turn it over and take a look at your print. I really like the right hand side, don't care for the color on the left. So I'm gonna position my A2 size card up and down on the right so I get more of that purple and less of that funky brown color on the left. If you're enjoying this video or learning something new, please be sure to give me a like and subscribe down below if you haven't already. Here's that funky yellow brown color I wanted to avoid. Okay, so I love this print. I love the purple. I love the color inside the stars. I like the texture. I think it's got a lot of movement. I think it turned out well. So now we're going to move on to using the stencil part of this, right? So the positive parts were the mask. This is the stencil. And I'm just gonna use some white paint. I'm gonna shift this um, homemade mask down here that we just made with a piece of vellum and some dyes. And you can make this as big or as little as you want. You can, instead of using vellum, you could use cardstock. But if you use a thick cardstock, I feel like it would be more difficult to get all the way to the edges of the pattern. You could also use maybe some thin acetate or transparency film. There's a lot of different things that you can use. I didn't end up keeping this stencil. Um, you can see that the vellum curls up a little bit, but it's great for one-time use. If you want something a little more permanent, then maybe try the acetate or the transparency film. I'm just using my larger palette as a paint palette just to pick up the paint a little bit easier. And I'm focusing on the left side of this five by seven gel plate because I like the less leftover blue paint that's on that side of the press so i want to focus on that part i'm putting the paint on really thinly so it's drying quickly but you also want to make sure that you're not lifting the stars with the other part of the stencil so if the stencil is overlapping your stars and the paint is dry it can be easy to lift up the work you've already done so just be mindful of where you're placing your stencil so i'll let that dry a little bit more help it along its way and then I'll go back with some Prussian blue and fill in around these stars. Now, I didn't just want this to be solid blue and the stars, I wanted some additional pattern to it. And I love these rubbing plates. They're really inexpensive. I got them from Dick Blick and it's a set of six and you can see the paint is really wet so I can just transfer it to that other gel plate. That's the nice thing about having two gel plates out at the same time is you can work on two surfaces. And look at this, I think it's awesome. The movement with the swirls in the background and then we've got the white stars. So here I'm just testing out what this would look like with white paint, whether or not maybe I want another color. Now I opted to use the yellow green. I thought it might be a little bit more fun and I thought it would separate the white stars from the green swirls a little bit more. But I'll be honest, I wish I had just done white. It's not bad, but I think it might have been a little more cohesive if I had used white. It looks a little disjointed to me with the green. I'll cover this with a piece of deli paper so that I can pull the print and not get paint all over my hands. The other thing is you can use these deli print sheets as collage paper. So I hang on to them and use the bits, the ones that I like. If I don't like it, and I know I'm not going to use it, but that's a pretty fun piece. And we'll go ahead and pull the print. 
So do you see what I mean? I feel like the white and the green is a little jarring. They don't really go. I wish I had gone with white for the whole thing. Here I've added some buff titanium to the 8x10 gel plate and I will pull this entire print. Um, and there was a little bit of green left over on the brayer so you can see that mixed in as well. So this is a good way to get all the extra bits off your plate, but if I have any leftover plate paint on the plate, I just leave it there. Even if my next round of gel printing isn't for weeks down the road, um, I just leave that extra paint there. Now, if you get parts that don't pull up and you really want to pull everything up, then just let it sit for a little bit longer and you'll probably be able to pull it up. So I like all those dark kind of edges and this will be a cool background for another card. Here are the prints and the solution for this print that I totally hated in the beginning, total fail gel print, is I'm gonna die cut it. So I'm just gonna cut some stars out of here because as a whole, it's too much, but as die cuts, it's gonna work. And check out those die cuts, they look great. So if you have a gel print that's a total fail, try and use it in a different way. Die cutting it into smaller pieces can be really helpful. I cut the sentiment out of that piece as well. And all of that crazy texture, which was overwhelming as a large piece, really works with that astral vibe when you have so much white space surrounding it. I love the flow and the movement of this gel print and the distressed look of those stars that we masked. And I added some additional die cuts to that one as well, just to fill in some of the spaces. Don't let those failed gel prints halt your creative process. Keep going and repurpose them. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you soon with more inspiration.